have a couple moments to start this session. Uh, it's, uh, we're live, it's being recorded. Um, usually Harassus has this recorded sessions for viewing for later. Um, ours is particularly early here in Lisbon, where I'm based. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be used uh, later on. So let's wait a couple more minutes uh, and then we'll <coughs> discussion. All right, it's um, eight o'clock. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, let's uh, let's start our discussion. Um, this morning we have um, uh, there are five of us. Um, we have four panelists uh, who are ready to share their opinion on the uh, uh, very interesting and very timely topic um, of uh, today's session related to the talent development and the uh, within the context of the EU high tech, uh, but not only the development uh, um, as is, but also uh, maybe some barriers and as well as the opportunities um, that are needed to push um, the EU high tech to the next level. So we're all aware that we have lots of uh, challenges, not only the societal challenges, but also technological challenges ahead of us um, to address those societal challenges related to the uh, climate change, related to the need of the optimism of the um, natural resources, related to um, shifts uh, in, in, um, in the work environment, also shifts in, uh, in the um, uh, positions and specializations uh, uh, within the uh, countries. Um, and uh, the quick shift in terms of the technological development and the catching up in some cases or leading that uh, uh, that needs to be done. Of course, the funding um, and the role of the educational institutions as well as the entrepreneurs to facilitate uh, um, upskilling, reskilling. Um, or integration of the new talent into the workforce um, or even funding that talent um, uh, are very important uh, topics. Um, so I think that is, uh, that is the goal of the session, to have this open discussion um, and see if we can uh, share some of the experiences as well as the solutions. So my name is Natalie Samovic. I'm going to moderate uh, uh, this session today. Uh, we're not going to spend much time introducing um, our backgrounds, uh, just very briefly. Um, uh, I'm co-founder of the uh, Resilient Group, um, dealing both with, uh, so uh, as an entrepreneur, um, and as well as the policy contributor um, uh, within a number of the European institutions. Um, and. Uh, I think uh, one of the major challenges that I can identify in this uh, field is is, um, is is related to um, uh, this pan-European scale-up uh, approach need and the pan-European uh, talent uh, that is needed and harmonization on, on, on that level. Um, so I would like to ask... Uh, um, I, I would like to start with uh, uh, David Muscatel, maybe, um, to briefly introduce uh, yourself and uh, share your opinion, opinion on the uh, um, on the question of what it would take to uh, develop EU uh, tech talent and what are the challenges uh, that we currently have. David? Good morning, everyone. I'm David Muscatel, Managing Partner of Forensia Capital Advisory. We are a consulting boutique focused on uh, venture capital raising and alternative investments. Um, so the topic is very interesting for us uh, because uh, we are facing constantly changed challenges on helping 
uh, entrepreneurs, uh, especially startups and early stage company on uh, driving from different European countries uh, access to capital. And uh, what is the most important indeed is the access to capital. They make a differentiation between the US market. And uh, what is the main issue here is about that there is a, a, lack, a sort of uh, um, uh, lack of uh, access to the capital because uh, um, there is a lack of understanding uh, between the inventor, uh, the startup, and the VC, for example, where uh, there is a lack of knowledge, especially on the gatekeeper side. Um, just to give a short example, um, I was discussing just a few days ago a case for a very interesting healthcare uh, tech uh, and with a German VC, which is an asset to European institutional funding. And uh, uh, the question was, uh, sorry, we cannot help uh, this case because uh, it's not a German company. So I'm sorry I said, uh, I think you didn't even look into the pitch because uh, this company is based in Hamburg. And as far as I know, Hamburg is based in Germany. So um, this is just an example that, uh, you know, uh, the, the process about to approach the capital, it's, uh, it, and this is not the first case I see also in Scandinavia, where uh, the, um, the, the gatekeepers, so the person that uh, are supposed to uh, evaluate at the entry level, uh, the, the business case, they are not uh, competent or let's say that they are low qualified compared to the same that's happened, for example, in US markets. So, um, the big difference we see here and need to be improved at the European level is about to raise the quality of the gatekeepers like in US where you have really senior persons that uh, they take their time and to look into uh, if the opportunity is, is uh, of interest or not to be funding. Sorry to be too long in this case. Well, thanks, uh, thanks, David. So it's 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 really complementary to a rolodex of uh, uh, other topics that is not really on the surface. Uh, so it's not only about the educational uh, uh, component, but also um, the the uh, as you call gatekeepers, uh, people responsible for uh, making sure that this funding and uh, fair allocation uh, takes place. Uh, in spite of the geopolitics <laughs> uh, already mentioned. Uh, thanks, thanks for sharing your um, uh, opinion. Um, may I ask uh, Constance uh, to step um, in and, 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 and share her opinion on this uh, uh, and a little bit the experience related to the topic. Thanks, Constance. Yeah. Sure. Thanks a lot. Uh, so uh, we're involved in executive search for the digital industry in, uh, in, in, in Europe. And so we are working with the fastest growing startups, um, especially here in, uh, in Germany, uh, but also with the transforming um, old economy uh, companies. And that's are really into company building from an org and cultural perspective uh, side. And uh, what we see, and what is a, um, a problem from uh, from our perspective, is that we see um, a hyper speed of changing requirements um, to, uh, to talent, and we don't have answers for that actually. So what we have to adjust in is the speed of adjusting the education in Europe and I'm pretty sure that we need another way of thinking about education, um, thinking about education in terms of cooperation of companies, of universities um, or education institutes and um, and the state and uh, this is why we need clusters and in, able, uh, in order to be able to create clusters we need a strong idea about the strategy, about the USP, about the, the value a region can create um, because we will not be able to focus on any technology that's coming up. So we should think on a, in a global perspective and really say, okay, what is Europe adding to the equation on a global perspective and where we grade it and how can we achieve that? So that is really, really important. And um, the last thing that I want to uh, um, highlight here is, um, uh, first of all, we have to do this before we see money is flowing in, yeah, um, because we need like uh, 10, 15 years um, to come up with the solution, 
And at the moment, um, especially in Germany, we see a lot, a lot of global uh, VC capital coming in and uh, mm -hmm. evaluations are exploding, um, but the talent is not there. And it's not only about the specialist tech knowledge, it's about the combination of tech knowledge with leadership knowledge and hyperscaling knowledge. Um, and um, the hyperscaling knowledge is the, the, the scarce resource basically. Um, and I think what is a really good example of how it worked is the biotech uh, case. Yeah, So um, they had been a startup, they really secured financing pretty quick and they secured uh, scaling up um, pretty quick uh, because everyone was hands on deck and everyone was like, collaborating uh, and making sure this uh, North Star is performing, right? Very interesting examples. Uh, thank you so much, Constance. Uh, yes, and um, um, one, one, one reflection on uh, uh, experience of the BioNTech. Hopefully it's not the pandemics and hopefully it's not the imminent crises that it would take us to get to that level. Uh, so it's not like the, the imminent water crisis or imminent uh, um, uh, other uh, technological disasters on the uh, cybersecurity that would take so... Uh, so the, the, the question a little bit how to prepare in advance and to have this urgency of, uh, of getting uh, there. Um, on the clusters idea that, 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 that you mentioned, there is a lot that is going on on the regional level, smart regional specializations, domain specializations, um, and this reflections on the uh, political and policy uh, level, not only in talent, but also on, uh, uh, on the industrial focus and the whole wave of reindustrialization that is taking place. So we are part of one of uh, uh, those waves in, in, uh, in Brazilian group as well. And I know the challenges. Um, so that's also a question to reflect later in the session as to what it would uh, take <laughs> for these clusters to be successful. But uh, I would like like to thank you so much, Constance. Um, uh, I, I, I hope you can reflect <laughs> a bit on those follow-ups as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Jamil, um, so you, you have hands-on experience on how to fix some of the uh, uh, of these uh, challenges, I think. Uh, you've, uh, you have the, uh, the solution um, up and running for this. So can you share uh, your experiences and the angles, please? <clears throat> Thank you. I don't think we are the only one who has solutions, but we have some ideas, and I think I'll definitely um, follow up on some of Constance's points and, and David's. So myself, uh, I am educated as a medical doctor, but never used that degree. So thank you for the Danish uh, taxpayer system, because um, it's a free education here in Denmark, where uh, Irene Nine's headquarter is. So I'm a co-founder of that and president of uh, our and partnership alliances and strategic initiatives. Um, and when we talk about uh, such a thing as a talent pool, I think Constance's point about there are no quick fixes, right? It's a 10, 15, maybe 20 year investment. Um, we are hosting the European Union, not the European Union, the European Masters in Soccer uh, in Denmark this year. Those who love soccer, it starts on Saturday. To build a soccer team that can win uh, the European Union takes time. To build a talent pool that can compete globally takes a lot of time. Um, and therefore, I think having investors on the call and uh, people with, uh, that, that are involved in capital every day, uh, we really need to align on building the future soft infrastructure for Europe. So we've been able to build tunnels between the, the Brits and the French and uh, Denmark and Germany is building a bridge as well and Sweden and Denmark has a bridge. Mm -hmm. um, building bridges, uh, you know, gets, uh, builds clusters, gets people together and, and it takes time and huge investment. Yes. And you build bid bridges based on what evidence you have to be building either, either, uh, like that kind of infrastructure. So, so capital does need to flow into building the future soft infrastructure to build talent. And that capital needs to go into the current uh, educational setup, the, the school systems, uh, of course. But to Constance's point, we also have to rethink. And that's where the tech uh, players obviously have a role 
uh, we do know, of course, that there are uh, a lot of uh, investment going into ed tech, which, which is education technology, which is which that ecosystem that Area 9 is part of. And, and, and <coughs> the right, uh, I would say, platforms then needs to also be based on an evidence-based approach. And that's, I think, capital is needed, but there's also a need for uh, what is actually uh, proving to work to improve talent. It cannot just be the be uh, most funded uh, platform or system that gets all the business. It should be also those that can show that this is actually working to consensus point with the Biontech. Why did that uh, vaccinate, vaccine actually, um, um, why, why was it successful? Because it was, uh, it went through trials, it got, it, they did innovation and it got approved. We don't have a system right now in EU or anywhere in the world where you actually can evaluate uh, uh, educational systems, um, at least new systems, against some metrics. So there are some challenges. We can discuss those. But the, the main theme I would uh, propose is how can the capital market and the others actually build a future infrastructure uh, that we all would know will take time. It needs VCs, it needs PEs, the private equity, but also government to invest because it's a 10, 15 year investment if we are to complete, compete with West and East and South as well. We shouldn't forget Africa. All right. That was me. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, yes. Uh, um, compete, um, collaborate, um, uh, complement uh, or find the new models uh, of, uh, of of leveraging uh, talent. So, for example, the digital innovation hubs uh, with uh, with uh, with Africa approach is one of those uh, I examples where where is there is uh, um, uh, collaboration from the get go built in when you probably don't don't build on the uh, strong foundation, but you leapfrog into uh, a different concept. So. Probably some of those are needed as well. But uh, thanks, uh, thanks for putting the, the, the challenge out there, <laughs> Jamil, that's for sure. Thanks. Uh, um, so if I can uh, move to uh, Rui. Um, Rui, could you share your views? You have experience uh, with the international business on both sides of uh, on, on, on two continents, um, and I think you, you have an interesting um, angle to, to put as the challenge on the table as well. Uh, yes, um, <clears throat> I am a sponsor of a, a very recent uh, approved uh, um, VC fund uh, here in Portugal uh, that is investing in real estate and tourism and uh, also connected to uh, agri-tech, uh, prop-tech uh, um, and uh, we are uh, involving education as we are partnering with, uh, with the university here in Portugal. Uh, that is uh, uh, doing a great job in food science. Uh, uh, they are substituting, uh, finding new uh, natural conservants, and uh, this is connected to the farming and uh, the agribusiness that uh, will supply the, the hotels that we are, uh, that the fund is investing on. Um, and um, uh, during this, uh, I, I'm just in on this initial stage of capital raising that the fund was licensed last week. And uh, the, I think you know there's a, a lack here of European uh, body that uh, uh, would go through all these new VC funds that could uh, evaluate them um, and then check the meritocracy of the of the, the model that is behind the fund or that could be below the fund, and uh, if the, the fund is uh, as a uh, a good or will have a good performance and it's uh, and it has the meritocracy that deserves to be allocated capital for them. Um, it, it is uh, we see now during this especially this COVID situation that the governments to be more and more uh, engaging with the economy and uh, um, I think this could be a way you know to you know to connect the private sector with the the, the public sector and to find ways to develop the economy. 
Yes, the, the, the times are transformative, uh, that's for sure. And the uh, meritocracy uh, is, is, is an interesting concept. And uh, uh, in terms of the funding, funding is, is one of the ways, uh, but maybe there are new models of the additional um, additional ways uh, how, how it could be um, um, favored, uh, let's put it that way. Um, so I would like to step into the second uh, um, question of um, our panel discussion, but at the same time, if uh, if the panelists have the reflection on the colleagues' uh, comments, because I see some um, some either nodding or uh, yes, yes, yes. So please feel free to um, also reflect or um, or comment on on this. But uh, uh, the, the 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 second question was: What are the most attractive conditions uh, for the innovators and entrepreneurs? And some ideas has already bubbled up, uh, but the uh, I assume it's not only capital and it's not only right infrastructures. Um, I assume it is also related to the ability to scale up um, and scale up uh, fast, um, and uh, and also um, to to other conditions such as uh, tax regimes uh, um, or related to the um, other topics. So if um, if the panelists can reflect on on, on this question, and uh, I see Constance nodding, maybe I can start with you <laughs> first this time. Yeah, well, so um, so many things uh, to 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 say, um, and uh, just don't know where to start. <laughs> We're doing well time wise, so please feel free to reflect. <laughs> um, you said something important a little bit um, uh, earlier um, that we should not only think about uh, those things uh, during a crisis and um, that it should not need a crisis to bring um, something great up like uh, the BioNTech uh, case. And this is um, exactly what I'm, uh, what I'm, what I'm uh, missing in Europe, basically, um, especially in Germany, is the hunger and the ambition for stepping into technologies. Um, and my interpretation um, is that um, that people are not hungry enough um, because they're kind of uh, satisfied and uh, saturated uh, in uh, in Europe. Because I think a lot of uh, talks about, um, okay, um, what do we need to get AI done um, a bit more, uh, get some AI practices to the universities and things, things like that. And um, it's not only the the offering, right? It's the demand um, uh, in terms of the students or the people um, wanting to step in. And um, what I miss uh, talking about um, circumstances and, and, and constraints as well is the storytelling of the people involved, right? So um, it's a state um, um, a re re um, rep representative of, of the government, of government um, making people hungry by telling the right stories. And this is what China is doing much better um, and what the states are uh, doing much better. They, they are kind of creating an urgency. And this is something <coughs> that is good in Europe, but it's making us slow. And it's um, that's just one uh, one point I want to, to add because it's uh, I think it's an, an important point. Uh, yes, very very interesting topic to reflect on is is this moonshot missions uh, moments. Um, I think what we've uh, done well within the past uh, couple years uh, um, is, is is putting this vision 2050 for decarbonization in in, in Europe. Um, that's uh, that's this this. Uh, um, the, the vision, the story was created, but then when you start trickling it in into the reality and into how it should be reflected, because you need the technological solutions and those will be needed faster and then realization on the capital that has to come also fast enough and fail safe as well. The component of the failure, um, everyone can succeed, should be part of it uh, as well. I don't think it's, uh, the realization is fully in place. So uh, your topic on the urgency and uh, on, um, uh, on the storytelling is uh, is very reflective. For example, from my personal experience, so we are um, jump-starting um, 
the the um, heterojunction cell manufacturing um, in in Europe, um, which is uh, next level of the PV technology, um, and uh, <coughs> market to China um, a number of uh, years ago, we didn't realize that it's not only about manufacturing; it's also about technology development, and it's about the whole value chain that is linked to that. So very quickly, you realize that you you cannot just you know to uh, develop uh, uh, something on the back while it's it's being done somewhere else because very quickly you'll cut off and then it has a trickle down effect on the um, on the whole supply chain and also puts the the whole market in jeopardy. But the story is very much needed to that and on the political uh, level it's hard to come back to something and realize that maybe some uh, policy mistakes were done uh, before and actually we need to get back to that. So story is super important uh, for this because from the story and from the political will and the steps uh, related to that, the trickle down effect uh, takes place. So fully... Uh, and and as always, uh, and I just want to uh, bring this uh, to the table um, as well, as always, um, strong leadership is needed here. So this really is a, a really tough situation and it's not as I said, it's not only about um, creating specialist knowledge, it's creating um, knowledge in every single... Uh, and um, and we really need strong leaders. Um, I don't see the the cities, I don't see the regions um, in, in, in Europe very strong in being curious about what is changing, you know, so uh, we need some more urgency and maybe the crisis is a chance. Yeah. Yes, yes, um, un unfortunately, but we do need this this push, uh, uh, that's for sure, because the, the talent is, is there, it needs to be developed, the realization and we know where we should, should towards what we should move uh, to. The uh, the teams, the ideas are there, but the political will and leadership. We have policy. We have fantastic uh, policies put in place uh, lately. Um, they are in place. So this this tipping point uh, is is much needed, and it, it is this community. It's the European <laughs> cluster that is important. I see also. Uh, if I can say something about attractive, attractive Jamie, conditions. Go ahead, yes, yes. And then Jimmy. Attract, attractive condition is linked about the potential development. So where I can set up my startup to earn quickly access to funding. And the moment you see the deals are driven mostly by UK, uh, Germany, especially uh, the clusters of Berlin, and, uh, and also uh, some in France recently, and, and in Sweden. So uh, why this country? And uh, because uh, they have different uh, uh, measures. Uh, one is about giving uh, government grants, especially Germany, heavily about this uh, and uh, compared to others. Um, so there is, uh, uh, unfortunately, there is a competition. Uh, there are startups, for example, in Italy that are very innovative. That doesn't exist in US, especially agri-tech, agri for instance. They are particularly unique, but they are struggling to get access to funding. Now, uh, COVID maybe um, with the recovery funds will bring in <laughs> to deploy. But uh, as uh, uh, before, uh, uh, Jamil was saying, the government need also to look to funding this technology. So, uh, uh, and there are not many government, European government, that are looking to that. Uh, Germany is one uh, that uh, more proactive in that sense for digitalization of the transportation. Just to give uh, one example. So all startups in that clusters, they are having this particular access to uh, a significant amount of, of grant. Uh, and I had a case instance where I was helping in, in, uh, in uh, capital raising. Uh, but uh, I said there are some very innovative uh, startups uh, and uh, unfortunately they are struggling because they are not uh, in the right uh, jurisdictions. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, we have I've seen technology from... Uh, even CIS country moving to UK because of the reason that they have a better access to, to funding in UK. Uh, so uh, the, in Sweden, because there is sort of uh, um, uh, coalitions of Scandinavia in order to back up transactions uh, and from venture capital. So if you are in other jurisdiction in Europe, no one VC will look into your deals uh, from uh, Finland, Sweden, Norway. Um, you can re uh, knock on the door as much as you want with the novel technology, 
especially in the green tech, for example, um, I have a case that uh, all oil companies should be obliged by government to, uh, to the reduce the CO2 just in the, in the light of uh, the Shell verdict of, of a few weeks ago. Uh, uh, so, uh, and, but still, uh, they are struggling for funding uh, where you have a solution improving the environment. Um, and there is a lot of speculation, so I hope I bracket here. Um, I'm based in Luxembourg, which is the second largest uh, fund uh, market uh, in the world, and second only to the United States. Uh, so here they are really focused on green tech, but uh, um, green tech uh, on the already developed companies. So we should focus on green tech uh, technology on the companies that are not listed yet. So and this will bring uh, the innovations into the country. Um, so not uh, sort of some people were saying. Uh, greenwashing as uh, new expressions about this strong interest uh, of um, investment in sustainability and, and, and green energy. Um, so uh, I think, you, you know, uh, the agenda of, uh, of the European commissions and the European Parliament should be focused on, as Jamal was saying, deploy resources where they are needed, especially in, in uh, uh, in these uh, innovations that uh, they don't, they are struggling to get assets. Indeed, these uh, startups are getting the attention of Europe only after U.S. investors come in as uh, business angels or as uh, uh, as a U.S. VC. So uh, what we see in Europe that uh, are more keen to listen, they are very efficient in terms of assessment. Are family office, family office are trying to invest into normal stocks. And they are now looking into this uh, uh, also because the new generations uh, are about responsibility in, in, in investments. They open up this kind of investments and, and they are more uh, keen to invest in the new technology than uh, even the VC. That are, the purpose about uh, their existence is about to uh, finance uh, uh, new startups. Uh, okay, they have different strategies. Some are not only investing to series F and D and so forth, but you know, the most interesting one is the early stage company with the biggest uh, capital growth. Mm -hmm. David, so um, am I reading correctly what uh, what you're suggesting that, that the family offices might, uh, with the new generation coming in and with the focus on the um, on the green tech, basically to counter any any potential greenwashing that uh, uh, could be taking place uh, within the uh, corporate environment, um, uh, might play a bigger role in shaping it and 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 take this leadership uh, um, on a number of uh, levels. Is that the hope, or is it already happening? It's already happening, and uh, and I hope that you know as. Uh, Jamal will say even government will open up the funding dedicated to uh, more heavily startup because if you write a check about 50k or 20k for startup it's ridiculous you know um, even this kind of award that I've seen in some uh, innovative startups 20k is completely ridiculous so it's a uh, which kind of uh, award is this uh, you know you cannot hire uh, increase your headcounts you cannot uh, you know and without speaking about some tax impact you mentioned before so uh, social uh, security costs they will have an impact uh, in the startup so they cannot have the same uh, social security that you have uh, I don't know in MNC or other type of company so uh, there should be sort of a privileged way of uh, of development of the company considering the, the, the technology they are putting in place and also about the limited resource they can get us I, I think uh, on the funding part uh, and the challenge in Europe um, uh, I agree with uh, some of the points here, also from David. One other major funding opportunity is uh, EU's Horizon Fund, right? But it's um, what I'm hearing. Uh, we haven't myself uh, gone for any grants there, but it's very bureaucratic and difficult. Um, we have some German partners as well. They are uh, complaining about that. So I think even though that there is actually funding uh, available, it's... Um, it's not transparent and easy, at least for startups or, or, or smaller companies, <coughs> to see those very large uh, horizon funds. One of the challenges there is that it's uh, also, as I understand, very tender driven. So it, it, it depends on what kind of, uh, sort of say, lobbying that has been going on in Brussels uh, that actually um, is, um, you know, which then leads to what actually gets funded. So there's something there that uh, maybe Constantia and others, you may have uh, some thoughts on that as well. But I think 
it's not that there's not money in EU. Uh, um, it's how how to get those and, and how that is fairly distributed uh, to companies. Yes, uh, you, you know here uh, in in, general, here in in Portugal, there is with this new uh, COVID the EU funds. Uh, there's a discussion because there's a, a big part of the capital is being allocated to the public sector and a small part to the private sector. So you know, uh, on my view, I think there should be balance because you know it's the the private sector is important to, to as an engine for the economy, and um, and uh, you know there's uh, the part of the innovation of that sh for sure should be uh, um, uh, allocated capital, and, uh, well, and an example that is I think is the benchmark uh, in, in, term, in, in the world is China. You know, I, I was living there the last seven years, and I, I know well. The, the country, <clears throat> and um, they, uh, they, they, the, in terms of meritocracy, the, you know, the, the best students are hired to work for the public sector. Uh, that's why they are so strong in, in terms of uh, the government. And uh, you know the the way that the, the, the government finances this, the, the most important sectors in, in high tech, in electric cars, you know. The, uh, this avant-garde uh, sectors in, 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 in that uh, avant-garde model that is being developed in China that is now the model for the world. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, so the, I think there's a lot to, to, to be done uh, now in, in Europe, especially that uh, and look China how they, they how strong they are now. Mm -hmm. Thanks, thanks, Ru. Um, very quick reflection, Jamil, on the um, Horizon um, 2020 program and Horizon uh, Europe upcoming new program. Um, I, I, I think the reason why there is uh, um, uh, frustration and uh, um, uh, a bit uh, maybe over over reliance on this type of funds because these are the innovation and uh, um, scientific development funds more than scaling up for the uh, uh, startups. Uh, uh, although um, they are they are they are part of the program and it is for the SMEs, but it's just one of the four other uh, types of enterprises. It's because my assumption is. Uh, um, is, 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 is because there is lack of funding and the mechanisms uh, and the right funding and the right mechanisms on the other hand. So the, the SMEs and the startups are resorting with the hopes into the Horizon programs, um, uh, but, uh, but neither the funding is adequate or the timelines are uh, not adequate. So we, we, uh, so we have a number of the Horizon uh, uh, 2020 projects, but we use uh, those projects for really pushing the boundary of the innovation to the next uh, level, not scaling up the existing solution, but uh, uh, pushing things on the interoperability, not only on the technology development, but also on the policy, but with the outlook towards the future. So miss, 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 uh, um, I think, uh, miss uh, uh, interpretation of uh, different types of funding and the lack in the other areas, I think, is one, one, one of the uh, um, issues. Um, on the uh, the European program of the resilience and recovery funds that Rui mentioned, yes. um, this is something that is going to be very interesting and very important to follow. Um, allocation to the public sector, great, but if the public sector goes out, and what Constance was saying before, going out and uh, um, and uh, procuring the innovative solutions and leading with. Uh, because public sector does not have the solutions themselves, so they have to go out and get those. And uh, so it's it's not only for the um, uh, hospitals and things of this nature, but also for the digital solutions and also for the procurement of services. Um, and the role of the society in here also and the enterprises is to watch the trends, uh, to um, analyze what's happening. Uh, there is a big parliamentary group right now that analyzed all of the um, resilience and recovery funds and participation of the SMEs in those. So it's, I think it's our collective role to, to make sure that it goes in the right direction. Jamil, I think you, 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 you want to comment? No, no, you, you, you're right. I mean, uh, the horizon thing should definitely not be a sole funding reason. It's a part of the kind of add-on, but it sh yes. still should be uh, easier for companies to, to seek uh, yes, and, 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 and help around that, I think is a, 
every maybe government um, can help uh, companies um, navigate uh, those big funds. I think that was my point. But you're right. Yes, yes, indeed, indeed. And uh, it, it's, it's an extremely complex. And the part that was dedicated for the SMEs, the funding, I think, and it's, David mentioned, uh, uh, was very small. So how, how much time do the SMEs uh, or startups spend uh, for receiving this 20 or 50,000 grants? I think the time they spend on it worth more and can innovate and uh, scale up more than actual funding received for that. Uh, uh, David, uh, we don't see, uh, you know, whether you want to comment or not. Uh, would you like no, to? No, no, I'm, I'm saying yes, uh, unless, uh, I think somebody was mentioned before, unless you are part of the club. So meaning that uh, uh, you have special uh, connections that, uh, uh, so in that case, uh, uh, you have a, a privileged way to get us funding. Uh, or a special appealing on the sector, uh, just give example about and mobility, uh, electric mobility was one of the most trending, and so uh, whatever startup was in that uh, was a privilege to get funding. When some other in the healthcare or uh, I don't know in the uh, food tech or other sector they were strong in the past. So uh, and, uh, uh, because it was trending, because it was this uh, this opinion driving the process uh, in terms of uh, uh, market uh, feeling about uh, the investment. So. Uh, and you know, and you create a wave, uh, the same like you see on the uh, some crypto, you know, where Elon Musk says something that is about it. The same as when big uh, VC are driving the same influence on the market based upon, uh, you know, their capacity of uh, track record they have in the past and the exit. So say, look, uh, uh, it's better to invest in mobility, and so everybody has to invest in mobility. But if you go with other things, they are not addressing Mm-hmm. Yes. Um Thanks. I think we're almost out of time, so I would like to have the uh, round of uh, the last uh, closing statements and maybe a reflection how will things uh, change and what it would uh, um, take to change within the uh, short and medium uh, term. Um, Constance, can, can I start with you? Yeah, just to sum it up, um, I think um, if we're uh, just thinking in 